I think it's amazing that I can run all this with my controller. So you're looking at uh, four motors, one, two, three, four, large motors from cars, and then four 21-watt um, car light bulbs, all running for um, 12 volts. But I added more voltage, so I go up to 16 volts, just because there's a, a voltage sag. So it's amazing I can run all this, just with my tiny little controller over there. So this new system is working really well. So again, I have two parallel MOSFETs in here, one on each side, aluminum heatsink, computer fan, and I have this bus bar here, and I have, I put the two together, so there's one wire from each one, so the positive, the negatives together. So I just did this test again, but I have more light bulbs, and I hit over 20 amps, so that's, that's really amazing. So here, uh, 1,000 is uh, 20 amps. So there you go, over 20 amps. And the temperature, so last time it went up to 42 and it was stable, so let's see what it hits now. It's pretty stable around 900. So it's stabilized, um, temperature is 46 degrees Celsius and the current is 9 amps. So on this last test I hit 20 point Two seven amps and actually it's the batteries that are the weak point they're getting very hot so if I had stronger batteries I'd be able to run higher or a bigger motor um, so that's over 300 watts if you consider that it was running at um, 15 15 um, volts but if I ran at 48 volts this would be 973 watts and that would be 1.3 horsepower so that's what I'm looking for um, the motor that I can have in the electric car I think it's gonna be around um, 48 volts, maybe higher. So with this system here, I can run over a horsepower continuously. So here's a controller section I have, and this is for maybe two horsepower. Um, and maybe one continuous. So I have two MOSFETs uh, that are rated for two horsepower each, so I'm making sure that it's oversized. And I have this nice aluminum uh, heat sink, so I put the small computer fan on top to keep it cool. So these are running in parallel. I'm not sure if this is going to work because I'm using the same backing, so the one of the power leads is actually grounded, um, is connected to the back plate. So this whole back plate will be charged, so I have to make sure it doesn't connect to the negative of the battery. Um, but I think I can run them in parallel, so that means they'll share the load, so I can run uh, double the current through both of them. Uh, I have four of these um, small diodes, so this is for the freewheeling diodes when uh, the motor is shut off, when it keeps spinning for the inductive uh, power. So there's a voltage spike, which actually I think fried my last, the last one I ran. So I have four uh, together. I also have a Schottsky diode that I could use, and I might use that later, but I'm going to see how this works. I have the power bar, so before I was going through thinner wires, um, everything here is for the power circuit. I'm running 18 gauge wire. I could go a little bit higher, but this is rated for like 22 uh, amps, so I might go a little higher than that. And this here is for the signal. So this is what's um, connected to the Arduino. I'm going to have this ground wire here, this small ground wire, 22 gauge, and this signal wire. And it, they're going to get the signal. The signal is going to go through and branch off and hit both of them at the same time, so they're going to open and close together. Um, so I hope that works and if this works then I can have 10 of these in my car um, this maybe cost me about $10 to build um, so it's pretty cheap so I can have a row of them all together and that should be able to handle uh, 10 or 20 horsepower for my electric car so I set up the temperature gauge this is just temporary I'm gonna have the uh, thermal couples later hooked up to the um, microcontroller the Arduino but for now I just have this uh, meter and I'm going to be measuring temperature of this one. So the temperature gauge is just about here at the widest part. So I'm going to cover this in thermal grease so that it thermally conducts and I'm going to measure the temperature. So these will both be working in parallel now. So I had to get rid of the fan because it was making way too much noise. So there's a lot more power getting through the controller. The temperature is amazing. It's staying maybe two degrees above room temperature. So the highest I got before was 28 um, and I was running at about 10 amps. Now I'm running a little bit lower. This is about 7 amps. So I have four lights and one motor. So I can use this belt to simulate load on the motor. And if I pull it back, you see the lights go dim and my power goes up. So I got this over 600, uh, 600 milli, millivolts, which is like 12 amps. 
So I've been running this controller for 15 minutes non-stop. It's at 75%, so it has switching um, for the pulse width modulation. That's why you hear the, the high-pitched noise. Uh, it's been running at about um, 5 amps the whole time, and the temperature has been climbing so slowly. In 15 minutes, it just went from 27 degrees to 36 degrees. And this is without the fan. The fan isn't moving. So when the fan's on, the temperature doesn't really increase at all. There's so little power that's getting absorbed by these MOSFETs. So this is a really strong controller. So now I have a pretty good setup where I'm running about 16 amps. Uh, and the temperature is going up with the MOSFETs. So I have this, um, this is a window motor. These are all 12 volt motors um, with a fan on it. Here's a AC motor from a car. Uh, here's a rad radiator fan motor from a car and another window motor. So this is a, a worm gear motor and then two lights. So I'm running all these things, four motors and two car lights. Um, off these lithium-ion batteries, and I'm pulling um, somewhere around 16 amps, so it's pretty good. And I'm using two MOSFETs. So. And you can see the temperature will rise. So, um, 800 uh, millivolts is about 16 amps. So here we are at 44, 45, so I have to turn this fan on now to cool this. It's getting too hot. So now, for less than $10, I've just made a controller that can handle um, well over one horsepower. So if I maybe had four of these or five of these, um, that it would go up to 10 maximum um, for an extended period of time and it could have spikes up to maybe 20 horsepower. I think that would be perfect uh, for the electric car. So that might only cost me, you know, 40 or $50 to build my very own um, controller using pulse width modulation. And I already have this Arduino. It works perfectly setting the signal. Um, so I'm very happy with this. So I'm going to continue testing with this piece. And then when I start building the full-scale car, I can uh, start building the full-scale um, controller and test it with the motor. So I soldered some wires on here. So this is the high-powered MOSFET. Um, this is the gate. So this is a signal. You just put a very small um, voltage and current into this pin, and then you have a uh, flow between these two pins. So here it's 22 gauge wire. It's very small. Here I have 16 gauge wire. It's like the normal household wire. So it's safe to maybe 20 or 30 amps. Um, shouldn't be a problem. And I'm just going to put this heat shrink tubing on there so that these uh, pins don't short out. And I got this really nice. Um, aluminum heat sink. So I can probably put two MOSFETs on here. So I'm running the test again. I got a new, uh, three new MOSFETs. I'm just trying the first one now. So I got a, a really big uh, heat sink, aluminum heat sink. So it's much better than I, what I was using before this tiny thing. There's a lot more mass and all the fins. I'm just going to try it without moving air, first of all. So it's the same amount that I had before, so somewhere around um, six and a half amps. We'll see the temperature. So 300 millivolts is 6 amps. So that air is climbing slowly. This is uh, so somewhere around 60, but you can feel the whole thing, the back fins, the whole thing is really hot. So it's dissipating its heat really well into here. So now I have the fan nicely mounted on the heat sink with the temperature gauge down there and the thermocouple. So it goes down to room temperature if you run it for long enough, like this. So now I'm going to um, run around 7 amps again, and I want to see where this stabilizes. So the last test I did is about 70 degrees with the crappier heatsink, but it's the same fan, it's just a better heatsink now. Climbing very slowly. Right now it's 43 degrees, and it's pulling just over 5.5 amps. 44 degrees. It's definitely not going to make it as high as 70. So it was a pretty good start. With one MOSFET, I got uh, 7.25 amps. Uh, it stabilized temperature was 66 degrees Celsius with the computer fan and a larger aluminum heat sink. And this is a total of um, 145 watts. So I want to keep bringing this up. Um, if each um, MOSFET can handle about a horsepower, then maybe I need 10 or 20 of them uh, to handle the whole load of the electric car.